Joining us now are 17 News political analyst Neil Sanoff as an assembly delegate for the state Democratic Party and Kathy Abernathy, a Republican political consultant. Good morning to both of you. Long time no see. Thank you so much for yeah. being in. Thank you. Well, let's start with you, Neil. Um, just some of your first, um, you know, reactions to uh, the the nominee of, of for vice president uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, is this a good choice for Joe Biden? You know, I don't necessarily think that this choice expands the base that Biden already has, but it kind of excites a base within his own base, right? And I think the thing is that the Democratic Party feels pretty confident right now in the, you know, in the polling and everything like that. So I think I think the thing is that doing this shows a lot of maturity on Biden's side picking a candidate who, you know, showed a lot of contrast between herself and him during the primary. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's a, it's a fine choice, especially coming out of California um, and, you know, making sure that we don't lose any other uh, Senate seats to like a, an appointment by a Republican governor. Kathy, how does this change the president's campaign going forward? We've heard from him already several times on this choice. What will he be focusing on as we get closer to November? Well, it won't need to change it at all because what the president's campaign has been about and what this country has been watching for the last uh, six, eight months here is the amount of violence in the streets of our cities that the Democratic Party is totally silent about. In fact, Kamala Harris is a supporter of uh, no bail so that you don't have any real liability if you don't come back to court against the death penalty, uh, wants to reduce the size of the number of people in prison even though they haven't finished their sentence. Meanwhile, the goal has been of the Democratic Party, Kamala Harris, Joe Biden is to put more regulations on the law abiding people. And I don't think that's going to fly, particularly with anyone who's undecided in this race. The contrast couldn't be more stark. Neil, do you think, you know, when, when this thing first started, I mean, you know, a couple of years ago, when we started to see the debates last year, last summer, right. uh, I mean, this is a long journey that we've been on. Yeah. And we have had a large pool, of course, narrowed down to uh, the presumptive nominee and also, and then, of course, Kamala Harris. Uh, do you think that this is something that is going to allow maybe some people who are more on the fence, do you think it's going to change their minds, those more moderate voters, or do you think it's going to hurt? Joe Biden and the Democratic Party? I don't think that a lot can really hurt Biden at this point. Um, Why do you say that? Because if you, I mean, if you look at the polling, if you look at the favorability of the president currently, it's not very good. And so I really do believe that a pick like Kamala Harris is, is, is the moderate, more safe choice uh, in, in this. He could have picked someone like Karen Bass or Barbara Lee, who was, you know, much more on the left. Um, much more easy for the GOP to say, oh, they're radical. Well, obviously, they're going to do that anyways. They call anybody, you know, um, that's left of Trump a, a radical socialist these days. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think that there is a risk there in, in choosing Harris. I actually think it's more of a safe choice. Okay, and, and Kathy, really quick, I have to ask you, do you, was there another candidate that uh, could have been more of a threat, do you think, to the president's uh, campaign? Uh, on the Democrat side, the I don't Democrat know. Side. Was there are. another name that you were you would have been I, more concerned with if if they were the VP? No, I, when candidate. when Joe Biden said he's limiting it to females only, uh, so he excluded another segment of people with probably deeper resumes, some other candidates in that regard. But he said he was only going to select a woman of the five that he had it narrowed down to. I, I didn't see any different, and because honestly, we don't call people something. These Democrats actually have positions on record, and that makes them left of the general public. And so I think that after watching what's been going on in this country and the president calling on Democrats who are not saying one word about all this violence, all this looting, all this mob activity, uh, we better have somebody in the White House and in the vice president's spot who actually cares about law abiding citizen and honoring the law. I don't see that in this ticket. Well, I, uh, Kathy, we heard from Congressman McCarthy yesterday saying that Harris's record would have immediately disqualified her from any moderate, steady-handed candidate, but Biden was not a moderate candidate in his view. What about Harris's record do you think makes her a far-left choice? Well, because her agenda has been, uh, particularly on law enforcement, been very, very liberal. You know, when you say you want to reduce the number of people in prison, what you, how about people just not breaking the law? They wouldn't be in prison. You know, so letting them out after they've done something and not serve their sentence doesn't make you uh, a law-abiding conservative person. And so the agenda has been left. 
And those issues are significant. The issue of doing away with all your private health insurance that people have been paying a lifetime for, she doesn't want that. She wants it all run by the government. The more you run it by the government, the more you lose your liberty, your freedom to choose what you want. So those are very specific things in, in her record. Uh, and, and Joe Biden hasn't argued with any of that either. Neil, I'm going to ask you, we've got the, uh, the Democratic National Convention coming up next week. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of big names that are going to be uh, at that convention speaking uh, next week. What are your thoughts on what's happening right now with the Democratic Party going forward into the November election? How does it compare to 2016? You know, I, I do think that there is more unity this time. Um, yeah, I, I think there definitely is some dissent by the more left or you know progressive uh, you know side of the party. I myself, I'm a I'm a delegate to the DNC for Senator Sanders, um, and you know our our party platform actually doesn't even include Medicare for all, right? So. I think there is a point right now where you know we've experienced Trump for the last four years, and so I think more liberal voters, even a lot of moderate voters, are going to say, you know, it's time to go back to you know at least some sort, some sense of normalcy, right, um, in electing Joe Biden uh, and and Kamala Harris. And I really think that you know it's it's interesting that. Republicans often say, you know, Democrats aren't saying anything about the violence in the streets. Well, you know, Republicans aren't saying anything really about, you know, the killing of Breonna Taylor or should those officers be arrested and ha held accountable. Um, you know, I don't see Kevin McCarthy saying things about it. I don't see Donald Trump saying things about it. I don't see Mike Pence saying things about it. So, you know, that was someone's life that was lost and she was just sleeping in her bed, right? Um, no knock warrant and was killed. So, you know, I think there's there's definitely two sides to this. Why isn't the right, you know, talking about that uh, rather than you know calling out the left and saying, oh, there's you know destruction of property in the streets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I really think that you know the Republican Party is kind of grasping right now at straws to try and stay relevant, whereas the majority of Americans, even in 2016, the majority of Americans didn't choose Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by three million more votes. So, you know, I think I think well, we are finally going to see a reckoning within the electoral college in those Rust Belt states, and I think they're going to come out and vote for Joe Biden. Kathy, really quickly, last word here. Well, I've got a lot to respond to here. We have electoral college. We have law. Again, Democrats don't want to go by our constitution that set up a system of how people are elected to public office. And all the issues you mentioned about well, this person been shot, that person been shot by police or not by police should all be handled in the legal system. But it isn't in a lot of cases. And the in Chicago, nobody seen no Democrat wants to talk about the fact that blacks are shooting in the streets and little girls in their bed are being shot. And that's a big issue, too. And I don't hear Democrats in Chicago who run that town doing anything about it. So, you know, we all want, we all want law enforcement, people that want to vote that way, want safe cities. But we haven't heard that from the Democratic ticket or the party in years. All right, well, we're going to have to press pause here because I know that uh, we, we could keep on going. Uh, we have, of course, the DNC next week. I will have you both on next week to talk about uh, what's going on. Again, we are gearing up for the election that is less than 100 days away. Hard it's to hard to believe. Yeah. And uh, so thank you so much for coming in this morning. We'll see you thank next you. week. Thank you. Thank you, both. Thanks, All, right. All right, we'll be right back.